Hey yo everybody, Haku here with my uh, just quick discussion on the um, final five remaining uh, ten bosses from Tower of God. And um, basically in this video I'm going to go over um, what I think their powers might be, what I think of them, who I think they'll end up fighting and maybe being defeated by, if I think that they have a chance to stay around in the story after this arc or not, and I'll probably also throw in a little bit of discussion about Kaiser and Liliel and Chiliel that I uh, just want to talk about. So um, if you guys want to comment down there what you think their uh, powers will be, who you think they'll fight, stuff like that, I'm interested to see your thoughts on it as well. Also, please no spoilers if you, um, if you have seen the stuff from the preview service. I know a lot of people have been saying, oh, I got spoiled by the preview service. So I'm um, trying my best not to since I do the live reactions. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. First up, I'm going to talk about Alphine since she's the one we were introduced to first. Um, she's Shadow Girl Alphine, but I don't think her power is actually going to have anything to do with controlling shadows or using shadows or anything. If I were to personally guess, I would say her powers, I think she's going to be very, very fast and that... Um, do you guys remember the um, the powers that... I don't even remember what it's called, though. The powers that Quant used back at Hide and Seek, where he, like, melded the shadows around himself and became kind of camouflaged or invis invisible-ish. I think that she might be able to do that and just be a talented scout, super fast and stuff. So either way, because of that, I really, really hope that... Um, also, I like her character design, too. I think that I'd love to see her fight Dan, because I would really, really love to see a good 1v1 fight with Dan, just because he's one of my absolute favorite characters in the series, and I'd love to see some more hype built for him. I'd love to see him defeat one of the 10 bosses 1v1. So Dan versus Alfie, and I think it'd be an awesome fight, especially if she does have similar powers to his. Um, next up is Yukon, the Toxic Waste Human. And Yukon, I like the design. He looks cool so far. He's kind of a big, brute-looking dude. I think his powers will probably be kind of um, self-explanatory from that epithet. Um, probably something to do with, like, poison or toxicity. Maybe something like that. Maybe he has toxic, poisonous Shinsu or something. His design is cool. It almost reminds me of, like, Fallout. Like, almost the... Um, almost reminiscent of the Enclave power armor. It's cool, he has like the little um, gas mask things up there and like the tubes going behind his head. So um, yeah, it almost seems Fallout-ish. But uh, he's really cool. At first I was thinking I'd like to see him fight Sachi. But now that I think about it more, like Sachi's kind of strong. I was hoping Sachi would be closer to um, Lilial, Shilial, and Kaiser level. So I was thinking maybe Sachi would help assist Bomb in fighting Kaiser. But if not, I think Sachi versus Yukon would be really awesome. If not, Novik versus Yukon I think would also work out well. Because since Ron 1v1'd Hess, I think to keep it so that Novik doesn't seem like he's falling too far behind Ron, because I like the sort of um, rivalry between the two. I'd like Novik to also be able to defeat one of the ten bosses. So Novik versus Yukon, I would totally not be mad. Next is Lulu. Don't know if it's a boy or girl, but um, Lulu of the Underwater Da'an tribe. And um, just from the way it looks and stuff, I'm thinking Lulu's powers will be sort of that it's a physical tank, it's one of the big beefy Da'on tribe guys, and they're generally peaceful, so I think maybe a big physical tank, but also there's these weird bubbles in the water tank floating around it. Maybe, we haven't seen anyone that I can remember with water elemental Shinsu powers, but maybe Lulu actually has water elemental Shinsu powers. And if that's true, I would love to see Lulu versus Yiwa to see how Yiwa would um, deal with the water elemental Shinsu, or Lulu versus Rack either way, because I think an awesome boss fight for Rack would be really cool. Or even if they team up Rack and Yiwa versus Lulu, that'd be amazing too, because I love those two together. Like, I, of course, I said I shipped them together, but I think that like as a team in the workshop battle, they were awesome. Just as a duo, those two are two of the characters that I enjoy most together. 
I enjoyed them together. I enjoyed Bomb and Boro together. Like, all the stuff with Bomb and Boro and Revolution Road, I loved. And I really enjoy um, Ron and Novik together as well. So, those are probably my top three pairs I can think of that I love the way they interact with each other a lot. So, um, I would love to see Rack and Yu off fighting against Lulu. Next up would be the Key Man, Bari Elvani. At least I think he was called the Key Man. But, uh... With his, <laughs> I think he looks awesome. I think his design might be my favorite of the five remaining bosses. Him or Alphine, I'm leaning towards Vari Alvani being my favorite um, design. And uh, not the most one I'm most hype about, but my favorite looking so far. Um, I like the way his uh, followers were all in like robes around him too. I think that his power, his is one I have absolutely no clue, but if I were to make a guess, Maybe his ability has something to do with puzzles and with, like, mental challenges and stuff. So I would love to see a Variel Vani versus Kunagaro Agnes fight. Just 1v1, those two trying to outsmart each other would be super, super cool. Um, or if not Agaro, maybe Variel Vani versus Ship. But I would prefer to see Agaro versus Variel. Um, yeah, I would prefer that. Then lastly, the one I'm most hype about, Arie Inieta, and of course I think and the Genius Swordsman. Um, I think we have already talked before. I think I've already said that um, I've read a bunch of places where people are saying there's a famous soccer player or footballer named Iniesta, and Inieta may be a uh, play on that from SIU. So um, Arie Inieta, I think the powers will be kind of obvious. I think he'll probably have Arie Swordsmanship powers. And as for who I want him to fight, the obvious choice is Inietta versus Hatsu. But just as much as I want Inietta versus Hatsu, I'd also absolutely love Inietta versus Boro. But beyond Hatsu versus Boro, or Hatsu or Boro, either one of them against Inietta, both both of those fights would be amazing. But um, beyond either of those two, I also wouldn't mind Inietta versus Danwa. Because Danwa is kind of a scrub that's been following us around. But to make him cooler, to give him a purpose, um, I think it'd be awesome to see Danwa step it up and be able to fight them. That also makes me think of Cherry La or Fonsecal Irudo, who hasn't really done anything so far. Maybe Irudo could fight um, Lulu or uh, Yukon um, to make herself a bit more useful. But I don't know. I, I, I don't think I would really prefer that to the other choices I had. But um, that's it. And as for which ones I think could persist further in the story, I don't really see Lulu, Yukon, or um, Variel after this arc. I don't see what they would do after this arc. But then again, we have only just kind of met them. Not even really totally met them. We've seen like one panel of them. But um, Alphine was introduced to us differently so she seems a bit more special and also I get this weird gut feeling that she could actually betray Kaiser, betray Kaiser and help us so I think Alphine could possibly continue in the story and the same with Adie Inietta simply because he or she is a member of the Adie family which is like the Adie family is really really important to the overall story and universe and lore of Tower of God so being a member of the REA family, I could definitely see Inietta recurring or playing a continued role. As for Kaiser, Kaiser's powers, I don't see any specific power, but like, I see Kaiser just being a very, very talented um, fisherman, maybe with a couple of really good items or weapons, sort of like Andrasi, where Andrasi doesn't have a specific Shinsu power, she just has like the needles, she has the weird shield things that she had before, and she has the bong bong, and she's just a really, really talented fisherman. I think I see Kaiser fighting in a similar way to Andrasi. Um, maybe, maybe not, I could be totally wrong, but that's just what I kind of see. Um, and of course I think that Bomb will fight and defeat Kaiser, maybe with Andrasi's assistance, maybe with Sachi's assistance. Um, or maybe just alone. I Either way, I think Bomb is going to be the one, of course, to defeat Kaiser. And I think 
my gut says personally I hope it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Kaiser in the story after the defeat by Bomb, I don't know. I don't know if Kaiser will ever be in the story again or if they will be in the story a lot. I, I just don't know. I don't know if they'll never be there, if they'll show up later on, if they'll travel along. I don't know why Kaiser would travel alongside us. Who knows? I have no clue what Kaiser's future role after this arc could possibly be. Now, quick discussion on Liliel and Chiliel. I don't know what their powers would be. I'm not even going to really take a guess. But um, I think that they could face off against Danak and Andrasi here, but not a real fight. And even if it is kind of a fight, it's not going to be conclusive. They're not going to be defeated. Because I think that they have built the problems, like Volume 1 built the problems of Anak and Andrasi so much. Like, Andrasi has to try to stay true to herself, but she's also trying to become a famous princess, and she has to make it up the tower. Um, Anak wants her revenge, all this tragic stuff happened in her past, and the two of them climbing together is bothersome for them. So I think that's had too much building, and also Liliel and Chiliel were foreshadowed and mentioned sort of all the way back in Volume 1. So having characters that serve a real story purpose as rival princesses that were foreshadowed that long ago, if they get defeated that this arc, that's like way too quick. So I think that um, Liliel and Chiliel are definitely 100% going to persist as rival princesses and occasional enemies as we continue up the tower and I see them being a part of the story for quite a quite a while so I definitely don't see Liliel and Chiliel making their exit this arc and um that's it those were my thoughts on um the uh what the powers and matchups in a fight would be for each of the uh, remaining five bosses and for Kaiser and maybe a little for Liliel and Chiliel. So if any of you guys have any of your predictions or ideas, I'd love to see your predictions down below. So um, comment them there and uh, tell me what your thoughts on mine were. Uh, no spoilers please, of course, like I said. Like if you did like this video. Um, subscribe for more Tower of God, Keys Niver, One Piece Mamusu, Walking Dead, and a bunch more. And, um, yeah, and, and follow on Twitter if you want for updates on when I'm posting stuff or pushing stuff back. So, thank you once again for watching, and I will see you all next time.